Hey guys, this is Sugar Shante. Um, wanted to come today and do a video about my journey with COVID. So this is gonna be part one and I'll come back and do a second part um, once all of this is over in the sense of giving a complete recap and rundown of how things worked out. Um, I am COVID positive as we speak. Um, my first day of symptoms was June 23rd. Today is July the 10th. So what I want to talk about is some things I've experienced as far as feeling and some things that I have used to help manage the symptoms as well as some things that I really, really feel that everyone should have in their COVID kits. Um, if you have not been sick, I recommend that you, just like you would have a hurricane preparation kit at home, that you have a COVID preparation kit at home, especially if you have young kids. Um, I think it's important to not wait until someone is ill and then you're running around or you're sick and you're trying to order and get things in. Um, please believe me, I did not have a kit. And if there's anything I can recommend, get a kit, okay? Um, basically on the 23rd of June, it came out of nowhere, absolutely nowhere. I was fine that morning, I was fine the day before. Um, between the hours of about 2.30 and 5 p.m., I was completely wiped out. Um, I had to crawl in the bed. Literally, I slept for about four hours. When I woke up, I had a fever of 101.9. Um, I had a low-grade fever, but I had one, and I had extreme body aches, and they just came out of nowhere. I was in the middle of actually hooking up a new computer when it happened. I literally was sitting on the floor in the bedroom hooking up uh, the router and all of a sudden out of nowhere it was like whoa and I literally had to kind of lay down on the floor and kind of get myself together. Um, so on the 23rd that was the first day of my symptoms. Um, when I later around that night, I'm gonna say around about two or three the next morning, um, my fever went up to about 102.4 um and i took a hot shower to kind of get the blood flowing in my body see if i could uh get that fever down um mindful hot showers basically allow the blood in your body to circulate better so that's what the hot shower is about getting the blood flowing through your body um I, the last two minutes of the shower i'll do some lukewarm water or cool water um to kind of put my system um at ease and then go from there trying to do get the fever down um i got in the bed rested the next day it was pure hell i'm gonna be honest i had body aches i had a headache and this headache um the only way that i can describe it is it's not like a migraine i've had a migraine if you've never had a migraine bless you um but just imagine the worst headache possible that you probably never felt in your life um i've had migraines before and this headache was like taking me out um i literally was in the bed with the covers over my head trying to see if that would help the headache um i took some aleve that really did help the aleve helped with the body aches and it definitely helped with the headache um but they were constant for days um the congestion by day four or five i started to have congestion um to the point where i could feel it almost in the back of my ears um, for people that have had sinuses, that's really what it felt like, but it felt like it was just really thick. And I was thinking, oh God, I have a sinus infection. And it wasn't a sinus infection, it literally was congestion. Um, by the end of the first week, the changes in my chest as far as the congestion goes, I could feel um, changes in my, in my chest. And that's the only way I can describe it. It's like I could tell something was happening in my chest, I just didn't know what. Um, so I was tested on the 29th. That was the first day they were able to give me a test. Um, the results came back really quick. I got them the next day and I was positive. Uh, by the time I took the test on the 29th, I had headaches, body aches, fatigue. Um, I had a uh, fever. I had no taste, no smell. I lost complete use of my smell, my senses. Um, I couldn't smell anything. I couldn't taste anything. And I had congestion um took the test like i said came back the next day it was positive um so they were like okay we're gonna wait two weeks from the, when the symptoms start we'll do another test um so i tested on the 8th today is the 10th of 
no, today's the 11th of July. Um, and I took the test on the 8th and I got the call back on the 9th that I was still positive. Um, prior to going to take the test, two days prior, I was feeling good. I got my taste and my smell. They both came back at the same time. Um, and I could, I, I eat watermelon for breakfast. Um, and, um, I was like, oh my God, I went to eat the watermelon. I was like, I can taste it. I can taste it. You know, it was just, I was excited because it was good. It tastes good. It tastes like watermelon was supposed to taste. And I was really excited about that. Um, I literally, um, washed some clothes and, um, sat down on the sofa and folded them. And when I was finished, I felt like I had ran for my life. I had to literally just kind of stop. I couldn't even put the clothes up. And I literally just kind of crawled up on the sofa and I had to sleep. I mean, it was, it got, it just came out of nowhere and it was bad. And I was like, okay, here we go. I'm backsliding. And sure enough, the next day she calls and she's like, hey, you're still positive. Um, and me and my doctor were talked about the symptoms I was still having. And of course, I still had the congestion. Um, but I haven't had a fever for over a week. Um, the body fatigue thing I was told could last for a while. So we were thinking I was on the other side of it. Um, and so the ninth was not a good day. The, yesterday definitely was not a good day. Um, I worked from home before this, so I kind of got up, thought I'd work on some of my caseload and go from there. And I, I didn't last four hours. Um, and I'm sitting at a desk and I'm literally just moving my fingers. That's it. Um, and I had to literally lay down. So I slept for a couple of hours yesterday and I, and I sat up because um, the one thing with COVID that I am understanding, you have to keep moving. Um, and so I don't have any underlying conditions. I don't have any of those. I have a pretty good immune system. Um, I can't think of the last time I was sick. I'm trying to remember when the last time I was sick. Like my immune system is that, that well. Um, and for it to hit me the way that it's hitting me, I can honestly understand how people with underlying conditions are succumbing to this. Um, and that, that's really the only thing I can say. You would have to really experience this, which I hope you don't, to understand why people are dying. Um, there were nights when I felt like I was underwater. Um, that's the only way I can describe those, that particular feeling. It felt like I was underwater and I had to, I sleep on my stomach for the most part anyway, but I can, could not lay flat. Um, if I wanted to, it's simply laying on my stomach or on my side with a pillow in between my legs, just so that I can get some relief, um, from the feeling. Um, and so that's pretty much, um, what I've been through so far. Um, with the feeling, I still have trouble, um, being short of breath. It, I have an oximeter, so it is not bad. Okay. It's really not that bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some products, um, that I've used and I have, and hopefully you guys can put a COVID kit together for yourselves so that you can help manage your issues. Okay. So hold that thought. Okay. So now I want to go over some things that hopefully will help you the way that they've helped me. Um, there's some key things that you need to have in this kit. Um, and so I'll go with the actual things. This is an oximeter. Um, this is the this is what the box looks like. I ordered it off Amazon. Um, this one was like 25 bucks. Uh, shout out to Mark Austin for um, leading me to these. Um, and basically what this does is it allows me to measure the oxygen in my blood. Um, now, anything under 90, you're in danger. You need to get to an ER. Um, but usually when you get that low, you already know something is wrong from what I'm told. So you'll know that you need to. So basically, um, the way the machine works is you're going to put your finger in it. And then it allows you to read your oxygen levels. So we'll see if mine actually, bear with me. I think I'm gonna put it on my other finger and it'll go. So basically what the oximeter does is it basically reads your oxygen. I'm not gonna waste too much time on this one. This one is just kind of, 
getting itself together. So I'm gonna see what all this does. So basically what it normally would do is give you the number, I think my battery is low. It gives you the number at the top for the oxygen level you have in your blood and at the bottom it's your heartbeat, okay? And so this is a really, really good tool to have. Again, I got it off of Amazon. That's what it looks like. Um, you can get them, like I said, this one was like 25 bucks. Um, a thermometer, okay? Um, I got the kind that is for your mouth, rectal, it works under your arms. They have like, it'll like be slash, slash, slash on the description, but it's just the basic, um, but this is, some people have the fancy ones that go across your head. Those can get like 40 and 50 bucks. I recommend them though if you have kids, but there's some an adult, I'm a pretty big girl, I'm gonna put it in my mouth and I'm good. Um, but you wanna make sure that you have a thermometer. Um, my doctor told me, you know, low grade fever, it's manageable. Anything that gets over, I believe, 103, then she was like, call me. We need to, you know, look at that. So those are some items as far as being able to assist you as far as thermometer, oximeter to measure your oxygen. Because that's one of the things when you start having issues with your chest, you want to be able to know your number. And as long as it's above 90, then you can talk to your doctor when it gets below 95. Um, you can have a conversation with them. But I was told by my doctor, the minute that thing reads 90 or lower, you need to get to an ER. So that's, that, that, was, that was why I bought one of these. And I'm able to measure that because I talked to her after a friend of mine on Facebook. He told me about it. And the doctor was like, yes, yes, that is a good item to have. And that's when we discussed how it works and the numbers I was looking for and how to do that. Okay. So, um, this is a diffuser. This is a diffuser. I have one in my bedroom, um, and one in the living room. And so you basically just put water and the essential oils in this and you turn it on, it plugs in of course, and it pushes out the air. Now the great thing, especially with the breathing is eucalyptus. So you want to get an essential oil that's pure um, or medical grade. And this eucalyptus oil is what I have. Um, I also have peppermint and orange and lemon. Um, but the eucalyptus, excuse me, it helps at night. Oh my God, this thing has done wonders for me. I'm, I'm, I'm at, this one is actually empty. I have to get some more. Um, but I keep that and I've noticed that I breathe a lot better at night when I have this thing on in the bed next to me. So those are some hard items just to help. So, and some people are getting humidifier and air purifiers. Talk to your doctor about that because sometimes humidifiers can be bad. Um, from what I'm understanding, so there, it's not all good sometimes with those, you know, with the, with the humidifiers or in the sense of how you want to like the vape machines, sometimes those can hurt you. So make sure that you're talking to your doctor about how and what is the best way to use one of those. I haven't needed one so far. So, um, but my doctor did explain to me what the humidifier was for. And then if you can't, you can always do the pot on the stove with a towel over your head or just get in the bathroom and do a really good steam. But if you are an asthmatic or you have certain medical conditions, definitely talk to your doctor um, before you do that. Okay. Um, so as far as supplements and things that help, hot drinks, hot drinks keep all the mucus you know you can kind of flush some things make it get loosened up and that way it doesn't get so hard and stick um this make sure you get herbal tea you want to get some things that benefit your system you don't want to just be drinking tea to be drinking tea um i love chamomile tea this is my favorite type of chamomile tea feel free to recommend one if you got a good one because i love me some chamomile tea but this is tazo calm chamomile so this definitely is my tea in the morning um i put a little honey in it um i always make sure that i get a natural honey um i love this honey which is out of austin texas good flow they sell this at heb and it's the wildfire uh pure honey of theirs i also like the one with the honeycomb inside of the jar it's really good stuff so make sure that you're not getting a honey like a mixture make sure you're getting an actual pure honey when you do it um some people do agave that's all good i just like honey better 
elderberry syrup. So this is kept in the refrigerator. This is organically homemade. Friend of mine, um, this is what she does. She's good at what she does, but she brought me this. It's not nasty. Um, the first thing, you know, they were trying to, she was trying to explain the flavor, but it's not nasty at all. And I was like, oh girl. And I guess this may be because I'm country. I eat prunes, so. Hmm. Um, but this doesn't taste like prunes, but this is elderberry syrup, okay? And I take this three times a day. Um, now, once my symptoms are gone, I'll continue to take it, but she told me to bump down to just one teaspoon a day. But make sure when you, cause I was looking online, elderberry, make sure you're reading the ingredients, people, because you wanna make sure you're getting something organic and something that's gonna help your system, not add a bunch of sugars and other nasty little properties that they're hiding inside the, the jar. So, elderberry syrup. Um, I cannot go to the grocery store, you know? I don't, and I won't let anybody in here. So, <laughs> it's one of those things where I've gotten some things delivered, it's cool, but ginger is a good thing to have. So, what I've opted to, um, because I was running through the real raw ginger really, really fast. And I still have some in here. I like to put it in my tea. Um, and I like to put it in my smoothies. But I got the powdered organic ginger. So this is simply organic. Um, they sell this at H-E-B. If you're in the Texas area, I'm going to say H-E-B. Because H-E-B is my, my uh, grocery store of choice. Um, we have Kroger's and Walmart and all that too. But I love H-E-B. So, um... The Simply Organic Ginger, and it's the organic ginger powder, um, and I can cook with this. I made some wonderful pinto beans. Oh, my God, and I put a little ginger in it. It was magic. Um, so, I have my ginger. You can put your ginger in your smoothies. You can put it in your food, um, sprinkle it in your soups, things of that nature. Ginger has wonderful, wonderful anti-inflammatory properties as well as helping with your immune system. Um, so, these things. I keep packs of these now. So, my good friend taught me something that I had never ever learned and I'm from the country. I figured somebody, some elder should have told me about this and maybe they did and I forgot. But you basically cut the clove in half and you put it on your bottom of your feet. You can tape it with a band-aid, you got some athletic tape or something or a little cloth and just tape the string. This, my God, will take your fever away. I BS you not, at night, I was cutting it in half and I had to buy some more and keeping it on the bottom of my feet. And it works. It works. So that that's a little trick to keep for all things. But clove, take the garlic clove, split it in half, and some kind of way tape it and put it on the bottom of your feet at night when you're asleep. And you do that every night. That helps keep that fever down. Um, this is sea moss. Um, by the moss boss himself, Marcus Hayes. I almost definitely put a link in the bottom in the description if you are looking for somewhere to buy uh, some sea moss. Um, and this is the sea moss mix that he sent me. This stuff right here. Let me tell y'all about this stuff. I'm a fan. I had never had sea moss in my life. But being congested and nasty and all that, he was like, sis, you got to get better. And he sent me this. When I say I will be keeping some of this in my house, so it's a tea, a tablespoon every day. I do it raw. Um, it doesn't bother me. Um, but I have a friend that can't stand anything that's of a, a sticky type texture. So if you're one of those people that you can't eat Jello, you're gonna have to mix it with something. Um, he has some amazing recipes on his Facebook page. You can put this in smoothies. Um, you can put it in your food. He told me, he was like, I put it in everything. And so I actually put it in my eggs the other morning and I couldn't even taste that it was in there um, just to see what it was like to mix it. But I've had no problem taking the tablespoon and just taking it in my mouth. This right here, the minute I started to take this, the phlegm started to come out. And it's also helped with my energy levels. I know for a fact this has really, um, like the B12, it's really helped me kind of move around a little bit more and kind of get some energy. But this has been cleaning me out. Like the minute I got it, literally the first day I took it, by that night I was hacking. 
Like literally it was just coming up. And so every day I notice now it's running instead of kind of just sitting there. Um, and it's just been coming out. So get you some sea moss. And I most definitely, like I said, I will put the link in the description if you want to order you some. Um, he ships everywhere. Okay. So even if you're not in Houston, you're not in Texas, you can get this shipped to you. I want to call this next thing the MVP of all my supplements. Um, the first day I alerted my coach at the gym that I was positive and I was like, hey, this, this is what's going on. And he, we, we talked about symptoms. He gave me a list of supplements and he was like, if you don't have these, get these. My doctor agreed. And the one thing he said that I had never heard of was this collado silver then i got a second recommendation from a college friend of mine who was like girl we had it get you some collado silver it's a game changer and i was like okay right. so we didn't have it in the store amazon this is available on amazon if you need to see the brand it's brunson um and i take a teaspoon of this every morning on an empty stomach it doesn't taste like anything to be honest um but i noticed just a difference in the way my fatigue was set up. I noticed a difference in the way I kind of was like reacting in the morning. My stomach, I do not have an appetite. Um, so far, I've only lost 13 pounds. Um, <laughs> and I say only because I'll tell you where I can get it. But I don't have an appetite and I still don't have an appetite. So a lot of times I'm like, I'll take a spoon of peanut butter and just eat it because it's like, okay, you need to put something on your stomach. But I noticed that my stomach was just not, it was in knots and I was having a lot of problems. And the minute I started taking this, it stopped. I still don't have the appetite, but this really did help a lot with my overall feeling. So I'm going to call this the MVP of my supplements. This is the Collado Silver. Okay, vitamin C. So the vitamins that I'm about to show you, all of these are supplements that were recommended. Some of them I was already taking, but these are all immune boosters. Okay, so vitamin C, zinc, magnesium, D3, B12. And I take those every day with my first meal, okay? Um, get those out of the way. And my MVP for body aches, has been a leaf. Um, I'm not really a big on Tylenol person, but that a leaf has really helped me. So um, as far as the body aches and the pain. So get you a COVID kit together. Get you some supplements that are gonna help boost your immune system. Um, make sure you talk to your doctor about the different supplements that you want to add, especially if you have underlying conditions and you're on certain medications. Um, the Collado Silver can interfere with the absorbency of certain antibiotics. So most definitely talk to your doctor about that. Um, get you some cloves for your feet. Get you some sea moss for congestion and getting that body right. Um, some ginger, definitely, um, elderberry syrup, make sure you get you some tea because you want to drink you some warm stuff to keep your body fluids, um, moving and the mucus not sticking. Um, again, oximeter, this is probably going to be the one of the most important tools in your kit so that way you can measure your oxygen levels, especially if you're trying to make the decision on whether to go to the ER or not because you can't breathe. Um, here in Houston, our ERs are pretty much swamped. And my doctor basically let me know that you go to the ER, they're not gonna be able to do anything for you unless you're in a dire state. So you wanna kinda measure things and know that, okay, when I go here, I definitely have to be here. It's that bad. And all uh, right, so I hope that everything in the video is helping you. I'm gonna do a part two once all of this is over and done and I can kind of go through some things and I'll keep you guys updated as far as what the aftermath is. Um, definitely having some discussions with my doctor. Um, I want my kidneys and my lungs looked at um, due to some pains and some things that I'm experiencing. I'm really thinking that I do maybe have some damage. Um, and it's a possibility um, we've been seeing across the board with COVID. It can be some short-term issues after or some long-term issues after. And I want to be on top of that. Um, so get your kids together. 
Um, God bless you. May he cover you and your family and your loved ones. Um, I am one of the fortunate ones so far. I, um, you know, me and my doc, my doctor is very transparent. This thing could turn over ugly on his head if it wants to on me. So I am taking all the precautions that I'm supposed to. I am resting. I am making sure that my immune system is up. I am eating uh, regular non-processed foods. I am trying my best to stay away from processed foods at this time. I've been eating a lot of green vegetables, white vegetables. Um, I um, have trying to eat clean. That's the thing, eat clean. Um, lots and lots of water. Um, I cannot even, like right now I want water. I can't even push the fanatic at it. You're going to be dry and all kinds of things. Um, I do the power aid for the electrolytes every once in a while when I feel in a slump. You know, the doctor told me to make sure I'm keeping my fluids up and staying hydrated. But I drink a lot of water. So um, make sure you get you some good, clean water and try to stay away from uh, processed foods during this time. If you are not sick, get your kit. Have your kit ready just in case someone does get ill. Um, do the necessary things now to boost your immune system. That's what I'm preaching to everyone I love. Like, do the things to keep your immune system as boost as possible. Um, so that's all I have for you guys. I really thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It's a little lengthy, but I'm praying that it is helping someone um, get your COVID kits together and um, stay safe. Put your mask on. Do the social distancing, making sure that you're washing your hands, making sure that you're cleaning your bodies when you come home from outside, especially if you're an essential worker. Um, so I really, really, really hope this helps you guys. Um, until we see each other again on this screen, as I always do, God bless you. Peace.